Hey guys, this is uh, Pastor Dave coming to you at the Solid Rock Coffee House right now. Uh, we're calling this set of videos uh, the Solid Rock Collection. Uh, play on words there. I know it's a Solid Rock Coffee House, and um, I don't know if you've ever had a collection of rocks. I know growing up I did. But it's just going to be a collection of short, five minute uh, devotional meditations, thoughts on the word. Um, specifically, I I'm going to try to focus on words of our Solid Rock, Jesus Christ. Things that he said in his Gospels, um, maybe passages that have, are, are prophetic about him, but really focusing on the things. There's, there's not a lot of solid ground, uh, at least in our minds right now, for many people. Things are shifting, things we were sure about, we're not sure about, but thank goodness we have a solid rock on which we stand, and that is Jesus Christ. Uh, so I hope you enjoy him. Um, first off, I just want to say too for uh, this first video uh, that I really, really miss you guys. I just, you know, you don't really realize what you have. I know that's so true until it's missing. Um, but I, I, I really have realized over the last few weeks how much I appreciate you guys. I miss you. I love the fellowship. I love seeing Jesus in you. I know I get more Jesus when I, when I, the way he reflects off my brothers and sisters. Uh, so I can't wait till we get to come together again. Uh, so today's for today's video, I just want to focus in on a gem or a, a for me personally that I've I've really enjoyed meditating on this morning, and that's in Luke chapter ten, verse thirty, talking about the good Samaritan. It, this story was um, a response with when somebody came and, and said, you know, what's the greatest commandment? Jesus tells them, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and in the second, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. And then the, the, that person's response was, well, okay, well, maybe looking for a loophole. Well, who's my brother? Um, and this story comes out. And so it says in uh, verse 30 of Luke 10, And Jesus answered, saying, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came, looked on him, and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he looked out, took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatever you spend, thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Now, Jesus asks this, this man, again, going back to his question, Which of these uh, thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among thieves? And the, the answer, being very obvious, uh, he replies, He that showed mercy on him. And then Jesus says, Go and do likewise. Just a couple observations, and then I just really want to make just a few few points to, to meditate on, to, to think about today. First, I know the enemy is out there right now. I know we're, we're not supposed to be ignorant of his devices. And he seeks to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's what he wants to do in our lives. That's what he wants to do in the lives of those around us. And we will come across people all the time, and for even in the midst of these times, we will come across people that the enemies had his way with, that have been victims of his devices, who have been stolen from. Like this man, he's, he's almost dead to kill and destroy. He's, just, he's barely there. And the enemy is doing those things all around us. And I think it, it's so good to just, for me at least, to keep these scriptures in mind as I go about and am encountering people that maybe the enemies had his way with. So again, you have the priest. He goes, avoids the situation, goes around on the other side. Not a good, uh, good <laughs> um, pattern there for pastors or priests. He avoids the difficulty. Um, and then, secondly, you have uh, uh, the Levite. Again, somebody who should be serving the Lord. He avoids him and goes on the other side. 
But this, and again, this is what I really want to key on. You have the Samaritan who comes and he comes and helps him. And what is the difference here? What's the difference? And I, I really want to focus in on just this word here. He had compassion on him. It says that, that he had, he looked on him and he had compassion. And as he saw the situation, he saw the man bloody beat up, left there in the dirt for dead. His heart, he was moved with compassion. That was at the forefront, that, and that's really what occurred in, in him first in this story. Before then, he goes on and we see his next actions, which is to pick him up, put him on his donkey, take care of him, go take him to the, the inn, make sure he was set and he was going to get, he's promised the innkeeper or the, the person taking care of him, and I'll come back and pay whatever else is left. But it began, all those things began with compassion. You know, it really makes me say, Lord, please work in me a compassion, a compassionate heart. Not one that's that's cynical or um, apprehensive or avoiding, but one that has compassion on those that I come across as I walk the paths of life. First Peter 3 eight says, finally, be ye of all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. His compassion led him. His compassion led him to do the inconvenient thing. Uh, to love his neighbor. It was inconvenient. The, the answer again is so obvious when at Jesus comes to the end. He asks that guy, well, well, who's the one who actually was this man's neighbor? And it was the one who could, did the inconvenient thing. It inconvenienced him. It made him go around a different course of events than he was maybe planning on for that day. It made him go to an inn work, do some business, take care of them. Uh, it was inconvenient. It was not just this, it interrupted. It was inconvenient and it interrupted his, his plan and his course for his day. But it was his compassion that led him to do this. You know, a lot of times we can look for the most convenient way, most uh, that costs the least, that inconveniences us the least when it comes to loving our neighbor. But oftentimes, really loving our neighbor costs us something, just like it costs this good Samaritan something. And again, it begins with a compassionate heart, looking at others with a compassionate heart. Second Corinthians 1, 3 through 4 says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. You know, this man was shown mercy. That's that's the answer that that um, that man had when when Jesus came back and said, "Who who was the one who loved his his neighbor as himself? The one that had mercy on him." And it, I know I need, I'm desperate of need of mercy and grace from those around me, from my Lord. I need so much grace and mercy. And my prayer is that the Lord would be working me a heart of compassion in my heart for others that is ready and willing and predisposed to be inconvenienced. But again, I know it starts in my heart. And I say, Lord, please work in me a compassionate heart that would then cause me to not go on the other side, avoiding it, but to say, you know what? I'm going to help this guy. Well, I miss you guys. I hope you um, I hope this is good for a first solid rock collection. And um, uh, stay tuned. I'll, I'll be probably posting more of these. So uh, God bless you. Miss you. And see you soon.